Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon and good evening and welcome again to another edition of our uh, community office hours. Wow, we see people from all around the world. Uh, just let us know in the meantime um, that you can hear us uh, well, that the sound and the video is coming uh, out uh, well at your end. We have a very, very, very exciting uh, um, session today um, about WME, about the Waze uh, editor. Um, so we're going to allow just a couple of minutes um, so that everybody is able to make it uh, on time. We already have 130 attendees in the room. Um, I'm going to allow our guest speakers to say hi as well. Oh, I'll start. Hi, hi everybody. everybody. Uh, okay, go ahead, Talia. <laughs> I have a delay today, so I will just say hi with my face now, and then I'll close the camera. Um, I'm Talia. I'll talk a bit later about what I do and, and what are we going to talk about today. Raz? Yeah, so my name is Raz. Uh, I'm a backend developer in the editor team, uh, and I'm very excited to be here. And uh, I'll, joining, I'll be joining mostly at the second part of the webinar for the Q&A session. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, can you uh, guys confirm that uh, you can hear us uh, well, that, uh, so that we can go ahead uh, with this amazing session that we have today? Uh, or if you can let us know if you, have, if you of course, see any issues, uh, I think that that will be better. But we will start now, so not to take uh, too much time from you. Um, so first of all, I wanted to let you know if any of you suffers any issues with the sound today, uh, we have um, a dial-in uh, option in case your internet goes down or anything, and you will be able to find all these details in the handouts um, section right beside uh, the chat uh, tab. Um, I want to... Um, I want to re uh, remind, uh, remind everyone to uh, please be uh, kind to one another. Um, since we have new people, uh, we might have new people joining for, for this webinar. So it's always good to, um, to, um, uh, to, to be polite and to allow everybody, everybody's uh, uh, time and questions. And uh, before uh, we move ahead, we have a reminder from Anat, uh, from our team, that we're still collecting um, questions. Uh, we're still collect collecting your stories. Uh, if, so if you want to be um, uh, presented in our social media, hopefully, so please take a picture uh, or scan that uh, QR uh, code. Um, and um, so you might have noticed that today we don't have, uh, uh, before I, I take, I give it to, um, to Talia, today we don't have uh, a Q&A uh, tab. We have a, a specific link uh, to, uh, so that you're able to submit um, all your questions. You should actually be able to submit, I noticed you have uh, some issues, you should be able to, um, to access that website now. So feel free to open a new um, Chrome tab or uh, on your phone. Uh, just confirm that everything's okay so that you can um, pose the questions there. The reason why we are trying this today uh, as opposed to um, as opposed to um, uh, doing it on, on Big Marker is because we understand that uh, we do need to um, app vote. We need to enable you to app vote all, all of your questions. We want to be able to um, to offer you the chance to answer all of your questions, uh, but at the same time, uh, we want to answer the most the questions that are the most relevant to uh, to most of you. Um, so I think that in a minute or two, you will be able to uh, to access that page, and we will be uh, piloting it uh, today. And at the end, of course. Uh, during our uh, survey, that we will really appreciate as, as usual that you fill um, that you fill in. Uh, we will be asking you how is your experience uh, with today's Q and A as opposed to um, uh, the general big marker uh, Q and A section. 
But without further ado, we have a very exciting um, session today. So I would like to uh, give it to uh, Talia. Thanks, Mauro. Um, so I'll turn off my camera just to prevent any technical issues. But uh, you know I'm beautiful, so that's fine. Okay. So I'm, I'm super excited to be here tonight. Um, um, I, on the one hand, I, I miss so much the the in-person meetups, but this uh, uh, pandemic is offering us new opportunities to meet. Uh, I'm going to meetups that I've never been to, uh, and I'm joining community office hours, and I see you so many names that I don't know, so it's very exciting for me, and so many names that I do know, so hi, everybody. Um, I'm trying to see the bright side of things. Uh, Mauro asked me to talk with you about the editor, and we tried to see if there is a specific topic that we could uh, dive into. And what I'm going to try and do today is uh, to give you a little bit how we think about the problems we uh, confront and what we want to do with them. Uh, it's not a timeline. It's not a. It's not exactly a roadmap, but it's uh, it's the domains we want to tackle when we create our roadmap. And of course, I'm gonna talk with you about the two main features that we are working on this quarter. And if you have any question during my, during my talk, you can always write something in the chat. I'll try to follow, follow it too. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the editor objectives and how we work as product manager. I didn't say that I'm a product manager, but I'll explain it a little bit uh, in more detail in a second. The domains we are looking at when we are working on our roadmap and what's in the oven. Um, okay, so when we try to understand what we want to work on when we work on the editor, we look at the, the editor as the best man map management and editing tool that enables keeping the map the most fresh and broad. Um, a productive, efficient, and insightful tool for users from all levels. So when we create these objectives, we try and look Every word is trying to be very accurate. So you see that we're trying to look at all levels. We want to be efficient. We want to be um, keep the, the map fresh. We want to make the editor a map management tool, meaning that you will be able not to just an edit a segment, but to look at the map as a whole. So all of these come to mind when we look at specific uh, features. What I wanted to talk about in the product organization, and I've been talking about it in the meetups I've been going to, is that we are trying to look at the editors as two different, uh, uh, it's not product, but it's two different domains, uh, scopes that are very big. One is creating features that the end users of these features are the ways app users. So if you're doing, if you're creating a feature like the cross, uh, the rail cross things, the people who will benefit from this feature eventually will be the Waze app users. They will see the alert for the specific uh, um, the the specific uh, feature. Or if we're creating lanes, the users will be uh, the client uh, users. But if we're working on something that helps, uh, helps the editors work more efficiently or understand what's happening in the map or monitor things like segment history, segment history will never affect directly the ways user it will affect you the editors so this is uh, the two uh, areas that we divided the part of the editing features the tools uh, are on they are un under my responsibility and the routing features are part of squads that work on routing features uh, and it's important to understand because what we're trying to do is to create uh, owners for a flow that starts that is working end to end and it's very different than until to very different to what we used to work like, uh, in the sense that we used to work in silos. The editor will work, and then the client more linear lanes in uh, in uh, in uh, in the cross in the crossings, lanes cross um, train crossings, and and now we're going to see it in in other features. Um, so today I'm going to talk mostly about how we look on the editing features, but when I'm when I'm going to talk about what's what's in the oven, I'm going to talk a little bit also about the current routing feature. Um, okay, okay. 
So the domains we have, uh, one is a communication loop for map management. So what are the problems that we're facing? Um, you know this so much better than us, but this is something that we already, we also tried asking you as a survey in uh, previous meetups and get feedback from you guys. But uh, eventually I think what we're seeing is that editor uh, lack information to, ho to, to solve an issue need, and need to communicate with the users to ask about more information about the issue that is being raised. Uh, and also editors lack an overview and the status of the other report. You have a, a lot of scripts, external scripts to find what tasks and what issue you should work on. Um, what what's wrong with the map? Where is the, what what's missing in the map? You don't have an overview. You look that the WME is working specifically. The editor helps you in a very high resolution area. You see what's wrong in a specific segment, but you don't have an high a high level view. So um, so what are we doing to solve these issues? Uh, one thing that we're trying to, trying to do, and that's our, that's I'm going to talk about later, is creating a ticketing tool to increase. Um, the visibility and the efficiency of your way to solve the update requests coming from the client. Um, because we understand that the feed that is uh, now in the WME and the way you see the map issues and the update requests is lacking. Uh, it's hard to understand what's important, what's not important. It's hard to understand what to work on next. Uh, we also have other things that we do under this area is uh, some UX changes for location sharing and the MTE mode, things like this that create a more screen real estate for the ticketing tool. We want to allow discussion on places, update requests, that you can have more communication there too. Again, this is not a roadmap. Yeah, it's the things that we want to solve eventually. Um, and we want to give more information on update requests that you can solve these quicker and more efficiently. So if an update request comes from a user that uh, their settings, driving settings is uh, uh, is um, is different, then then this will be uh, will be shown for you guys. And eventually, we want a much better chat that the discussion of the update request request on the map issues will be fast between users, between client users and editors, and between editors and editors. So that's the domain of the communication. The other domain is um, the activity visibility of the map for security and for community ramp up. Um, you guys don't have a view on all the changes that are happening in the map and in the areas that you manage. You don't know if there are new editors, it's the mentors, uh, the mentorship program is, is small and it's hard to grow, to grow the communities this way. And it's, 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 um, it's lacking the ability to moderate the map on the other side. Um, so what we want to do for this is want to give you a much better overview of what's happening in the map. One thing that we're working on uh, in the infrastructure already is the area history, which means that we want to show all activity, um, uh, showing all activity per time frame, meaning you can see whatever happened in a specific area, if it's deleting segments, if it's adding places, if it's um, new editors on the map, whatever happened uh, on the area you're looking at, you'll be you'll get kind of a log. And once this log is uh, existing, you can subscribe to any activity on this log. So if you're uh, interested in specific uh, actions, you want to know about closures happening on highways, you can get alerts on these. Uh, if you want to get only deleted segments, you can get alerts for these. And this will help moderate the map, and you will be able to also communicate once you see these changes uh, in the map. And also, we want to give more information about uh, what's happening with the tile build and things like the highlight, as you already have, is to show things visually on the map that you can see the changes or uh, problems that you need to solve. The third domain is uh, the editing efficiency. Uh, you have a lot of scripts, which is amazing and great. We always uh, look at these with inspiration. Um, but sometimes you, you just need to work manually on things and, and some information cannot be added or it can only added by hacking the map. Um, so solution for these things, one thing is the recurring closures, adding a real repeating closure entity, not something that multiplies the closures. Um, things like, uh, I'm skipping to the third bullet, the time-based speed limits, instead of editing 
uh, thousands of segments each season or um, changing them or not having to support not able not being able to support daily speed limit changes we want to add this this is the next big feature um, from the routing feature uh, perspective and real-time closure on turns um, these are uh, um, um, I know sometimes cannot be uh, edited at all and sometimes you have some hacks when you know it's uh, happening with uh, small segments uh, what we've done with the node closures is a little bit the ba the um, I'm talking with my hand I forget that I closed the camera is the platform for uh, the real-time closure on turns we already started understanding how to support it um, the fourth and last is the community growth uh, new editors have a hard time joining the communities the communities around the world the map first of all the map is mostly lock secondly the ed, the tool itself is robust and complicated it's hard to understand what's going on when you first uh, open this tool so these things is something that we um, on the one hand, we don't need to grow fast. We have a stable and strong community. You guys are amazing. But on the other hand, we always want to have new people join if they want to. Um, and this is something we want to support. Um, so one feature that we're talking about is the option to suggest an edit, edit meaning that new users can send an, an edit to review. A more uh, veteran editor would look at these edits, approve them. Um, will uh, will help the user grow uh, it's it's a little bit like mentorship but different it's more uh, connected to uh, the edit itself um, and we want to create uh, in the meanwhile we're going to do something that is um, a manual effect of this is, is sharing is not really suggesting an edit is just sharing on the forum to downgrade to download a, a segment um, inside the tool and not by scripts um, we want to create a better first time experience, even by small things like asking the users, what are they trying to do, how we can help them in specific features and understand uh, the flow that they're most common flows that new users are interacting with. Uh, we're going to have a lot of Wikipedia enhancement and we're going to have a lot of form enhancement. I, I'm not aware of who of you are in which form to understand that, but Wikipedia has been upgraded in the last couple of months. And, and new features are, are being streamlined into Wikipedia. Uh, the same thing is going to happen with the forums. It's going to be upgraded, and a new feature will be streamlined uh, into it. And, and I think the overall experience will be much better uh, between the different tools. We want to create something that is, is um, coherent in the sense that you work on the editor and Wikipedia and the forum uh, and, and in the Waze app, and you, you feel you're, you're one user. And, and it's a, a linear and, uh, and familiar experience. OK, so I want to talk with you about two features that are in the oven in different phases. Uh, I want to have a big disclaimer before I'm starting. These are totally work in progress. What you're seeing here is not final in any way. Uh, I had a meeting two hours before this session uh, that we are going to change something dressed definitely in one of the frames that I'm going to show you now. So be patient and be aware of this. Um, the first one is road shields and route instructions. And what, what we're doing now is basically two or maybe even three features together. One thing will be an, an option to edit the road shield per, se, per street. What, what's now been a manual effort by developers and it's very hard to, uh, uh, to maintain across the world will be available in the editor, which means that you will have an, a, a road shield editor or a street editor that you will be able to choose a street and create a road shield for it, choose the shape and add the number. And the second feature is that you will be able to create the route instruction, meaning that it's not only the road shield of the street because for exits, or other ramps that you need or whatever needed, you will be able to create um, the route instruction more in more detail. Um, so that means that, um, and this is what I'm showing here is already totally changed today. But the idea is that on one hand, you have, you have the road shield editor where you connect 
the, um, the road chill to the street. And on the other place, you will be able to create directions for the street, meaning north and south. A, B, A to B is north and B to A is south. And what you're seeing here, which is the, um, the route instruction, will not be here, but will be in the turn override. So you will be able to see what's the default turn instruction, which will be, for example, 278 north. And you will be able to say also the exit number and also free text and things like this. I need to, um, to express here that we are not changing the TTS. It's only the visual part for now, but it's a very good baseline for also uh, changing the TTS later on. And as I said, we were debating very strongly about where to have it on the segment or on the turn or multiple, uh, how to do it. Uh, and this is eventually today we, we're thinking it's going to be on the on the turn instruction. Um, okay. Next feature is what I talk, talked about before is the issues tracker. Uh, what you see on the left here looks like the regular feed that you're used to. Um, maybe some of you don't know that the feed on the left was trying to be a personal feed uh, to give you the information that we were thinking that is relevant to you, something that was across around your drive or around your house um, or around the favorite place and trying to give you a, a personal feed, more like a Facebook, uh, um, on a Facebook feed. But what we're doing now is changing it uh, from the bottom and Raz is... Uh, digging in with his hand and working very hard to do a very big infrastructural infrastructure uh, change. Um, the idea here is that what we're doing here is that actually you're going to see what you're seeing here is now is not a personal feed, it's search results. And what you will be able to do is to filter whatever URs, map problems, whatever you want to see, which one by a search that you do like in any um, task uh, tracker, tra issues trackers that you know. Um, so you can choose an area, you can choose the time it was created, you can choose how many comments it has, what kind of, uh, if, if it is relevant to you or not, kind of label it has, like things like uh, around my recent drive or things like that. You can turn off, filter or search out uh, a specific types of uh, URs or map problems or whatever it is you want to do. Once you apply the search, you actually change, you get on the left a search result list, and the map is also updated. Think about how you search for uh, places and filter out uh, the finishes uh, in Airbnb or how you look for hotels on Google Maps, right? When you look on these things, you give a specific attribute, and then you get the results both on the map and in the list. And when we think about the future, we can think about things like, Okay, I see something, I want to send it to a specific uh, editor. I know he knows what's going on in this area. I tag him inside um, the issue and, and we create a chat about this issue. Uh, the chat follows me wherever I go inside the client app, inside the editor, um, and, and, and I can continue the conversation and solve these two things. The idea is to be more efficient in solving URs and to be more uh, uh, quick not just efficient, because the idea is that we want to be the map to get the best map that we can as quick as we can, as we can and understand if there is a problem and, and fix it as fast as, fast as we can. Um, also down the road, we can imagine things that if we see a lot of URs around a specific place, we can uh, raise them to the top and say something is happening here. Try and see here and like insights about, uh, about uh, issues like that. Um, so this is the issue trackers. Of course, the idea is that each search like this could be saved. Um, save as a, a search that you want to see again. So if you want to work on places, you, serve, you save your search around a specific topic. You want to work on comments uh, or recent comments, you can do that. You can save your searches. Um, sorry, let's go again. Um, so this is, this is um, the foundation for the other feature I talked about before like the area history, because here what you see is basically a list of history of URs and map problems and PURs, right? Or all the issues that can be raised from the client, the client, the ways client. On the other hand, I can have the same idea of a list of all the edits, okay? Imagine a new tab that will have area history, and then you can see a different list that is basically not an issue tracker, but an editing tracker or edit history uh, per area. And this this feature will be the foundation of subscribing to an editor. So all of these are like building blocks 
for what we see is important to manage the map. That's how we see uh, uh, to give you an hi a higher level view of the map, a little bit of a zoom out of understanding what's, uh, what's, uh, what's happening in the map. Um, I think this is it for me. Um, and I think we should go now to the question. I can deep dive on each one of these topics, but this, this is very high level of how we look, how we tackle the roadmap. Uh, and you need to understand that all of these happen in parallel to other features. For example, Road Shield is a, a feature that is, again, is aimed to waste users and not to editors. So these are going uh, in parallel and many other things are happening too. It's not the only things that we are working on. Uh, and that's, we're going to, see these evolving eventually um, in the next couple of quarters. Uh, Mara, I think that's it for, for the presentation. And we can go to the question. Awesome. Thank you so much, Talia. And um, before we uh, start going over the uh, Q&A section, I will, I'm, I'm going to allow a couple of minutes so that you can guys can up, go over, the, uh, add any other questions that you may have and also upvote uh, any of the um, questions already asked by others. Um, I want to say, Talia, that actually I was at least I was able to hear you perfectly so that you can try um, turning on your camera again if, if you like. And worst case scenario, we will um, um, turn it uh, back on. Um, so another minute. Uh, before uh, we start, we're going to start testing um, this um, new Q&A uh, feature. Um, and of course, please, please make sure to um, give us your feedback at the end of this. Um, when we finish this webinar, don't close the uh, webinar window. Please stay because we will be you will be redirected to um, a survey. And we will really appreciate if you leave us your feedback on how, what you thought about this new um, Q&A feature. So um, with that, we're gonna start uh, with the questions. Um, let me know if you guys can see my screen. I'm presenting currently the questions uh, that we have collected. Um, so the first question is, um, how old are the GPS points on the editor? Will it be, be, po will it be possible in the future to see points from a specific date? or exclude tracks from a certain day or month? Uh, Talia, do you know the answer to that? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I know it's aggregated. And I know the other thing I know is that I, I, you had the, uh, a community hours with Gil the Sutnik, right? Yeah, we did. Uh, so Gil is working on the GPS points, trying to get these different. This is the editor is just showing points from, from a different um, from a different part of the structure, the, the technical structure. It's coming from something that's called the merger. And Gil is trying to get better GPS um, information. Uh, the, the editor just shows what it gets. It doesn't define what, what to get there. And Raz, uh, correct me if I'm saying something that's, that's not right, but um, it's not something that we're changing. And I think Gil, is, Gil has a lot of uh, ideas that he wants to uh, push in that direction. Mm -hmm. Sure, we can always uh, send, uh, uh, we can follow up to this question and uh, send it uh, in the forum post. Um, the second question is, when will jun junction boxes and laden guidance work with roundabouts? Roz, do you have an idea? Is this hey, I'm, I'm not sure, okay. no, no, this is something uh, uh, we decided to postpone to the next phases, and I know that the next phase of lane guidance will be support for junction boxes. Uh, like support for uh, preferred lanes and stuff like that. I'm not sure uh, uh, if this uh, was communicated, uh, but about roundabouts, there are some challenges there, uh, but uh, we are discussing this uh, every now and then, but I can't give an estimation uh, to this. So uh, we can get back to you on this. Uh, if it's important, I guess we can uh, push this and uh, work on this. I don't know. All right. Um Next question is, can we get updated sa satellite maps? Some of them are several, several years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to add on top of, if you have any other information for Leandras, that you can always reach out to your community manager. Um, and we as community managers can request a new satellite uh, images uh, 
to be uh, applied to the map. But if you want to compliment uh, guys uh, that, que that question in any way, well, you're welcome to do so. Again, I know that Gil is working also because of Falcon trying to get better set in, uh, in places that uh, especially is working hard in Israel, I think. Uh, but but this is something that that in order to create streets that uh, reflect the reality as much as they can, um, this is something that that's only stable. Right. Next one. Do you consider the brilliant brilliant scripts that have been written by users to encompass them into the WME? Uh, I'll answer a little bit, and Roz will give the technical aspect of it. Um, we are amazed by the script. This is to be to be totally honest. We love uh, we love the scripts, and every time that uh, some of you share their screen, I ask to see the real full version of how you work with the script. These are amazing. Um, and it's amazing what you can do with no real support in the sense there is no real API. You're just doing whatever you can in the front end. Uh, we. To take them as is, Raz will talk about this, uh, the problem with, with doing this. It's not something that we can copy paste and incorporate in the WME uh, from many different aspects. But what we are doing is trying to understand the top priorities feature and do try to incorporate these. As you saw just before I showed about um, sharing to the forum or recurring closures, uh, things, specific features or, uh, and that we're trying to look at. And also to be more transparent in the way we work, that uh, we try not to break the scripts. Uh, we do have in the back of our mind a, a fantasy of having a better API to support script, and maybe Raz can talk about it. It's not currently in any roadmap, but it's something that we are all the time um, discussing. Yeah, so we've been discussing this uh, many times in the past. It's more of a front-end area. I'm back-end developer, but. Uh, we know this is very important, and even today, every time we we work on a new feature and uh, change the API or do some uh, code refactors, uh, we make sure not to break the scripts. And we know that some of, of the changes we do uh, do break the, the scripts, and uh, we try to uh, to to be in touch with you guys and uh, and understand if something uh, was broken. Uh, but uh, as you said. Um, we do want to take many of your scripts and, and uh, incorporate them into the editor, but it's not so simple. Um, uh, we, we can't just take your code and uh, put it in our code base. We have a whole infrastructure and, uh, um, you know, uh, some uh, 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 design we should follow uh, and uh, practices, you know, and uh, it's not so simple. But uh, again, this is a more of a front end uh, area, so uh, maybe we can get back to you with this. Uh, that's All right. Um, next question. Uh, what about to allow a basic addition in pictures or places? Sometimes with some small additions such as cropping or blurring, the, such as cropping or blurring, the pictures could be used. In addition, could you allow a way to inform the user which picture has been rejected? Yeah, so so the editing of the of the pictures for places, uh, we've seen this request many times before. We feel it's a, it's a, the our the return on investment for this is, is low. It's a it's a tool for editing pictures, and and we would rather just have it rejected the image if it's not proper enough. Um, we do want to better communicate, as I said, all the communication around places, uh, update requests should be transformed. There is none. Uh, we need to, to improve it um, uh, by multiples, uh, first to enable you to have a conversation and then to give re reasons for rejection. All this information should be uh, available to both uh, sides. We feel that losing a picture is not a, a big, usually not a big loss, uh, if it's not if it needs a crop or or, uh, or blur or something like this. Uh, it's something that's that's on a list, but it always when you reach to this part is you. I would rather work on the issues tracker than working on the camera you know, on a photos editing tool. So when I look on these things, um, wait one to another, it goes down in priority. Although it's a great idea, of course, and we would love having. If it was just 
Why is not? All right. Would it be possible to add some sort of karma feature to the after request mechanism? That way, we editors would rate UR quality and subsequently get an idea of a UR probable value without breaking anonymity. Users with extremely bad karma would even be banned for, from submitting future after requests. I'm, I'm not sure I understand this, and so maybe uh, um, we, we could see in the chat more clarification about this because I did hear about the idea of, of, of creating bad points for URs or something like that. Um, I, I, I didn't get many uh, reports about users uh, abusing the UR system um, in the sense that we need to get them away from the, from the, uh, from the editor ecosystem. But I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure, and I, I fully understand the question. It sounds like uh, something similar to what we have on uh, place up request. Like uh, if you if you create uh, too many place up requests, which get re rejected, uh, then you get bad points, and you can't uh, submit any more uh, update requests and stuff like that. So maybe it's something similar. Uh, I'm not sure uh, what will be the effort to to make this uh, like uh, generalize this idea for uh, update requests. Um, it's a nice idea. Right. We are experiencing a quite low response rate from Waze app users after they report on uh, the UR. Since the email they received is not very clear on how they can respond, they can respond to the to the editors. Will that be changed in some time? Yes, definitely. This is a this is a very high uh, important issue. Um, the, the what we've done now, when it, we opened it in Android, and there was a bug, and we closed it, and now we're opening it again. First of all, we we're having a a pop up for user that got a response in the app to try to uh, increase the rate of response uh, from the ways users. This is totally a hacky uh, improvement. It's not something I'm proud about, but it's something that's supposed to help users be aware that an editor responded, but we are working on a, a huge project of a, that's called Waze Messaging Platform that's supposed to, um, to, to uh, be the infrastructure for all messaging inside of Waze. Uh, it will start uh, replacing chat features that are existing already inside the app and eventually we'll get in for the to the editor also and will support much better communication. The mail is terrible. I agree with you. I'm the first to agree. It's, it's awful. It will be changed. Thank you. What is being I just considered? Just an hour a second. I see in the chat that you click on the button, it does nothing. That's the bug that we had. Someone in the chat wrote that the, the, you click on the mm -hmm. um, on the notification. There is a bug there. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, it will be resolved soon. It's looping too much time. Thank you. Um, what is being considered to improve the response rate when we ask reporters for more information on the URs? Currently, we're about a nine or ten percent uh, response rate. Alex, first of all, I'm amazed. I would love to know where you get this number because it's a correct number, and we never talked about it. I think I, we. Have to, I wonder if you know it from from a different uh, analysis you guys have. Um, what is it being considered for? So, so what I talked about in the previous question, that's what we want to do. We want to create first from, from one side, from the reporting side, we want to have more information that you will be able to resolve the issue quicker. So this is something you've been asking for many years to, to give a, a, the, the, the UR will be created uh, when you know what are the driving settings, if the, if the driver is a, a public transportation, a set of public transportation or motorcycle and uh, things like that to help you uh, resolve the issue. And from the, risk, the communication uh, feedback loop, we want to improve the, the chat. We don't want to have it with uh, the way it's working now that we're sending a push and an email and a link to the editor and a very basic uh, so-called chat in the app. So, so that's what we're working on. Thank you, Talia. Is there anything being done with regards to the redundant functionality of the RPPs and HNs? Is there there were rumors of the two being merged some time ago. 
this is uh, something we was on the table. We were discussing it deeply, uh, and we are now not doing that. Um, there are a lot of changing in the search infrastructure. I don't know how much you're aware of, but uh, our search PM, maybe you'll have a community office hours with him, uh, Yuval, is doing. Okay, so you will talk with him about this, and please push also the issues about uh, residential places and house numbers. And, and and this is something that we are that I hope we will work. But the infrastructure change that he's doing there is so big that uh, we wanted to postpone this thing, and uh, that we won't have uh, um, any conflicts when working on this uh, huge feature, which is is uh, is old and 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 requires a revamp. All right. A question which I'm not sure it's uh, totally related to here, but when will uh, the next phase of lane guidance be released? If you have any uh, what, what do you mean next phase? Because uh, we just uh, rolled out continuous straight, and I think uh, the lane guidance feature as a whole is now available to close to 100% of the user, right? Uh, if I'm not mistaken. If not, uh, they, it's, it's only the countries who drive on the right right on the right side yeah, yeah you're right uh so i'm not yeah. sure what you mean by next phase if it means junction box um it will take a little bit more, more time it's still uh, in design phases uh i can't give any estimation um stay tuned <laughs> right is that uh, a plan to keep things in the feed more local specifically as a country manager i click next place when working on place updates, I often get get taken to the other side of the country. I'm in California and get New Hampshire or Rhode Island. Um, I prefer um, area uh, EA or AM, AM than elsewhere. Yeah, so, so I think uh, Tyler covered uh, all of this. Uh, we're working on a new feature. It's called the uh, issues tracker, uh, and it will turn the feed into a search engine. So you will be able to search. Uh, the entire uh, map uh, issues repository, which includes both uh, uh, place output requests and map output requests and map problems. And you will be able to filter them by country, by state, city. Uh, we have a bunch uh, of other uh, filters, like uh, less common date and uh, number of comments. Uh, it will be very nice. You will be able to filter them by a managed area. Uh, I think this is what you want, right? Uh, it will be great. Thank you. Any chance of letting users schedule closer closures for the new segments so that the closures would be added to them in the tile update? Do you consider let, letting users add closures through the sna snapshot mode in order to make it possible to add closures to segments that were to segments that were deleted, splitted, or merged? Um, yeah. So we had some discussions about it. We know it's very frustrating that you can't add closures on the new segments. It can be, it can be possible, it can be uh, implemented, but there are some challenges. Um, it's a complicated topic. I can't give you a, a long answer right now. But uh, yeah, we thought about it. I'm not sure if it's going to happen. I can give you a more elaborate answer if you want uh, later. What happened to the plan of linking places with the parking lots? Uh, I'm not sure. Talia? Is she still with us? I'm not sure. I don't see her moving. Um, but in any case, I think that uh, we can't hear you, Talia. Um, I think that uh, you know the um, you have the phone number in case your um, internet connection is not working well. But in the meantime, I will skip it to the next question, and we can possibly go back to it uh, when we get uh, uh, Dalia uh, again. Um, so uh, it's a mi minor thing, but I would love to be able to zoom out beyond zoom level zero. Um, there are times I need to pan to a place a significant distance. Currently, I go to Google Maps to find a location when I use a script to open WME from 
Yeah. Then I, I use a script to open WME from there. This is much less than ideal. Are there any plans for this? No, so this is another front-end issue. I can't give you an answer. We want this as well. Uh, even that we are developers of the platform, uh, it's very frustrating that you can't zoom out. We always go to the live map and then uh, click on the edit the map button. Uh, it's a front-end issue. There are some challenges. Sorry, I can't give you uh, an answer about it, but we can get back to you. Sure. Um, Talia? I, from yes. the project, yeah. you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yeah. OK, sorry about that. Um, I, can you go back to questions? Sure. <laughs> so I think that let me know if you meant this question of, or the one before. Um, and the one before. OK. This one? Yeah. So I, I wanted to say that we are dividing this part to two issues. One is adding closures to new segments, and the other one is the, the deleted, split, and merge. The adding closures to new segments is something we have discussed more uh, thoroughly, and I think we have better solutions, and I do think we're going to have it, but it, it's, not, it's not currently on our roadmap. Um, the other one is more complicated. That's, that's what I want to add. Now we can go back. Thank you. Um, all right, so next in line, this question by Chris. Can we uh, have all of the available object history made visible in native WME, including history about segments which have been deleted or split, much of which is still at still available on, a, on the server? Yeah, it's very nice that you know this. Uh, it's a product decision. We don't have a UI for this, but maybe Italia can, uh, can say more about it. We do, we do so, uh, I think part of it uh, is uh, also will be part of area history. As I said, that we will be you know, creating a list of all the things that happened in a higher uh, level. And the information in the history is not something where uh, we haven't got many requests for that specific one, but we can we can add on it. It wasn't it wasn't completed. I think uh, when created. All right. Next question. Will future PURs and flags, for example, gas station prices, will have the ability to respond to the reporter like we can with URs? Uh, so, so yes, as I said, that's, that's part of what we plan. Uh, the gas station prices is, uh, is, if someone will create it, we will be able to respond that it's not the issue. But yes, that's, that's planned. Okay. Could it be considered to create webhooks that send fire and forget notifications to Slack or Discord or another tool used by editors whenever something interesting happens, like a report that appeared, that appeared a map update that took place, or even a chat message being sent? Uh, I'm assuming Tom is uh, referring to the app itself, right? From the, not from the editor, um, and, and this is something that we are less uh, less part of the discussion. I don't think it's it's anywhere listed, um, but I'm not I'm not sure I fully understand. But Tom, please please send me whatever your thoughts are. I think he wants an API that uh, will let him subscribe to like edits and uh, do something with them. So right now, we don't allow it to subscribe to any edits. But uh, as you said in the presentation, uh, it will be possible in the future, in the near future, hopefully. And then once it happens, once it's supported, I guess we can think about uh, exposing it as uh, some kind of API. Uh, it might be possible, but uh, we're still not there. All right. Just uh, as a small note is that with, I've, I've gone ahead and closed the Q&A section since we have a lot of questions to answer. I want to be able to prioritize uh, the ones that we already have in the queue, and we have only 10 minutes left for this session. So the next question is, can we get waste closures to work with local teams? Um, some closures they put in are wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that. This has to do with the, um, our MTE uh, team. Um, I think that they will be 
um, more suited to, to answer this question. But again, if you have any insights on this. Uh, I'm not sure about the operation parts, but I'm sure community managers can get together with, uh, with uh, I assume, Dana from your team or and to have understanding better where we need a, a better communication um, between the teams. Definitely. What's the roadmap for charging points? I guess charging stations. Are there any plans for adding data by API, availability, etc., like Google Map does? Uh, I'm, I, I'm not in the details. I just know that uh, uh, a lot of the work in the editor has been created already, but I'm not sure about any operational part of the data and where the information will get from and, and when will it be added to the client. I know it was uh, it was uh, postponed. All right. Could we get pictures in the update update requests? Um, not on our roadmap. Uh, not sure. Um, it's a nice feature, but it's it's not part of what we're adding. Uh, uh, the client changes are much harder to uh, achieve. And the flows, and also it's uh, it's something that the driving feature. I would not be happy to see a driver taking their app out of the phone and and taking a picture. It could be a feature for a non-driving situation, which is something that we are thinking about. That the report menu should be looking different when you're driving and when you're not driving. So maybe this could be part of that. Thank you. Um, Hearing I'm from not North. sure where this, is down, where this is coming from, but maybe for me. <laughs> I'm also hearing from Mark. I think it might be from you, Al. For me? Uh, so, can you try muting it? Yeah. Thank you. We can try um, again. Um, if a user without an account raises a UR, we cannot reach them at all. Can we type what we want in the UR and ask questions? but they are just not received. Will that be addressed and when? This is a misperception that has been going on for, for years now, and it's not right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going around and talking about it. It's, the, that's, it's not an issue with accounts and without accounts. Until maybe six months ago, uh, I, I lost time in COVID times. I, maybe it was a year ago, I don't remember. Um, we changed it. That the only thing that was uh, different for uh, for different type of users is new users, users that were um, that their account was created, not account that entered ways in the last 30 days did not get any push notification um, about a, a comment on the UR. We changed that. Um, it was a default setting of push uh, notifications that we didn't want to send too many information for new users, but we changed it and it's not happening anymore. So, so this is this. Um, th there is no issue for users without account or with account. Thank you. Now that lines are added, I'm not sure if it's lines or lanes, would you consider partial closures or lane closures? Um, it, it's, uh, I, I'm not sure, I'm not fully aware of all the lane roadmap. Uh, I don't think it's a near future uh, feature, uh, especially when we don't know if a user is on a specific lane. So, so the um, so the reward of adding this information will be small um, for the mm -hmm. for this part of uh, modern life. Thank you. Did you consider adding map manager time saving options? Uh, for example, building in answers to PRs based on uh, problem type, say, say time for editors. Another issue is build a template for RTs blocking, for example, set times, title, tiles, titles, et cetera. So I, would, so I will only need to select segments on directions. Um, we did think about things like canned response for PURs and URs. So you will be able to uh, something that, that we've seen in in script um, templates for real time blocking is, is not something we did look. We are looking on templates for different features, but um, um, 
I don't I don't think specifically for for real time blocking. Um, I, I think set timing titles etc. If we will have a repeating a recurring closure will be less uh, uh, it will be redundant and will will be set by by recurring closures uh, and not choosing a, a template. Okay. Next question is, are there any plans to support street names in multiple languages or alphabets? Um, not on our table now. Um, I don't. I know it's, again, a, a little bit part of, of search. So keep this question for the Yuval session. Definitely, which was supposed to happen, I think, in two sessions uh, or three se sessions from now. So it's definitely coming. So stay tuned. Um, hello. Um, how is the issue of the new PR creation that appears or disappears for the first couple of days? Needed to needed the refresh the editor a couple of times to the PU, for the PR to appear. Uh, I'm not aware of this bug. It seems like a bug, and um, and I guess. Uh, if Ruben is not aware of it from the community part, so please report it. Yeah, yeah. we actually have a bug today. Uh, someone reported it, uh, and we look into it. It's not about PURs only, it's also about venues. Uh, you get uh, different venues in certain areas if you refresh uh, several times. Uh, I think we, we solved it, but uh, just an hour ago, we got another report that uh, Newly, newly created venues still have this problem. So we look into this, if it, this is the problem you're talking about, and uh, it will be solved uh, today or tomorrow, uh, as soon as possible. Thank you, Lars. Um, I know about the anonymity of in the URs. Is there a possibility to create a way to mark or something the UR as duplicated directly by the system if a user opens a UR near to an, near another UR? So uh, it, it's not only an issue of anonymity, but we do want uh, to have some kind of aggregation and to see, this is what I talked about, um, to, to be at the next level of, uh, of the um, issues tracker is that we can understand that there are many, uh, like a cluster of URs in a specific time and area and, and, and raise these and say, look, something's happening here. In the last 24 hours, we got 10 URs per um, junction or something like that. Um, and, and we would want to have that, definitely. Thank you. Um, I see some uh, very nice comments about uh, the evolution from Cartouche to the current WME. So I think that it's also good not to only ask questions, but to give uh, Proper recognition to to the work that you uh, guys do uh, about the editor. Um, next question is um, this one: uh, What is the concern about having geo nodes or geo handles to align streets for LG uh, heuristics? Uh, these chess changes the shape of a segment and not making sh and not making short segment. Use when streets are offset and don't have a plus shape, but you have to maneuver at a 30 or 40 degree angle to go straight through. I'm not sure I understand. Maybe. Uh, uh, I don't understand either. Well, if you can quick clarify the question in chat or some, somewhere else, uh, we can get back to you on this. Sorry. All right, thank you. Um, and we, I think that we have time for one more question. Um, so here it is. Um, is there any plan to work with what three words in some way? Um, are you aware uh, of this uh, project, Talian Ras? If I'm not mistaken, in case you're not aware, it's I think that your address, um, you, can, you can choose by, by three words. Uh, you can find your location anywhere in the world. I think it's uh, is a pro project that I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it very, very uh, shallow. In a shallow way, I don't. I just heard about it. 
No, there is no plan. We, we, we have nothing discussing about this. I'm not sure what. Uh, would love to hear if there are any thoughts of something we should consider. All right, thank you. So um, we have reached um, our time for the end of the webinar. So before you go, I would like uh, to, to, to do th two things. First of all, uh, to ask everyone who is uh, um, watching us to stay on the tab and to uh, please answer uh, our um, survey about today's session, especially also as well um, regarding the um, Q and A, um, and uh, I would like to thank a lot, a lot, a lot to Talia and Ras who were with us today, and the great job that they are doing um, with um, with the WME and the amazing plans that we have for the future. Thank you so so much, guys, um, for for being here and talking to the community and getting their feedback. Um, and I want to I, I want to leave it to you if you have any final words. Are you muted? Yeah. No, so no final words. And just uh, it was very nice. And uh, thank you all. Uh, you had some very good questions. I'll get back to you in some of your questions, uh, specifically the GPS ones. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Yes. Stay tuned. Thank you, for... guys. Sorry. Sorry. I just want to say thank you that you're spending this time with us. This is amazing. Um, it's always inspiring, always learn new things, and, and uh, we always, uh, um, even though the format is not as I would want it to be, uh, in the sense that it would be so much better to see each other in person and talk things through, but we do as, as much as we can, and, and it's great that you're spending your time with us. Thank you so, so much. And uh, we are finishing this, web this webinar. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Stay all safe. And uh, here it goes, uh, the Saturday. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.